Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printed here. In today's video, I want to show you how to use a Python Anywhere MySQL database on your local machine. So if you've ever tried to do this before, you may have realized that you can't connect to the database on Python Anywhere. And that's because Python Anywhere doesn't allow their MySQL databases to be connected to directly outside of Python Anywhere. So if you have an app on Python Anywhere and you connect to the MySQL database that you set up, then you can connect to it with no problem. But if you go to test your app on your local machine, then you'll find that you cannot connect to the MySQL database. So there is a way to overcome this, and it's using something called an SSH tunnel. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to create that SSH tunnel so you can connect to the database on your local machine. So just a quick overview of what this tunnel means. It is basically using SSH to open up a port between your computer and the Python Anywhere server. And through this, you can somewhat emulate being on Python Anywhere server on your local machine. So it opens up a port and basically everything that you do on a particular port on your computer will get sent over to Python Anywhere and it will be like you were actually on Python Anywhere. So it's a little difficult to explain, but as you see when I write the code, you'll see how easy it is to use. So I have my Python Anywhere MySQL page open and has the uh, database information here. I'll be using pretty printed dollar sign default as the database. And I have the console here for that database open. And if I show the tables that I have here, so show tables, I see I have an empty set, meaning I have no tables. So we'll see that I get to uh, create this table in just a moment. So to get started, what I'll do first is I'll write the code for the typical case where you don't use an SSH channel. So let me quickly write the, the basic Flask code. So from Flask, import Flask. And then I also want to import Flask SQL Alchemy because this is about Flask SQL Alchemy and connecting to the database uh, through Flask SQL Alchemy. This method can be used um, with other approaches to connecting to the database outside of SQL Alchemy, but for the purposes of this video, I'll use Flask SQL Alchemy as the way to connect. But uh, if you do use a different way of connecting to your database, like uh, just Python MySQL, uh, you should be able to see where you can make some changes to get it to work. So first, I need to install SSH tunnel. So I already have that installed, so I'm not going to install it again, but it's just pip install SSH tunnel, just like that. So you just go ahead and install that, and I'll instantiate the Flask app. And then what I'm going to do is have app config, and then SQL Alchemy database URI. And basically this is the location of my database. So it's gonna be MySQL slash slash, and then it's going to be, uh, let's see, pretty printed dot MySQL. And then we have uh, Python anywhere dash services.com. So Python anywhere dash services.com. And then there's also a port. So the port will be, um, should be 3306. That's a typical uh, MySQL port, I believe. So 3306, port's not that important. Perhaps I can even get away with not using it for now. But that's the URI that I'm interested in. And of course, I need to have the uh, username and password. So um, my username is pretty printed. And then my password is, I'll just put my password here. And then there should be an at. So pretty printed and then my password and then at uh, here. And then I need the name of my database. So pretty printed dollar sign default. So just like that. So now I'll instantiate the database object. And then I will create a simple table. Let's just call this test because I'm not really concerned with using this table. I just want to create a table that I can see on the console when I go back to the MySQL console. So I'll just say this is the primary key. And then that's all I need. So I can basically get away with doing this. Now, since I don't have my real username and password here, I can't show you the error message that I get. But if you're familiar with trying to connect to Python anywhere with uh, this approach, just putting the URI here, then you know that it won't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the tunnel. So I've imported SSH tunnel 
And what I want to do is I want to create it here. So before the database URI, I'm going to use tunnel equals SSH tunnel and then SSH uh, tunnel forwarder. And then there are some things I need to pass in. So first is the location of the SSH. So in this case, ssh.python anywhere.com. That's going to be a tuple with one thing in it. And then I need to pass in some values. So SSH username. This is going to be the username for your Python anywhere. So in my case, pretty printed. And then the SSH password is going to be uh, your password. Let's put my password. And then the remote bind address. So remote bind address is going to be the location of the database that you want to connect to and the port. So this is another tuple. Um, in this case, instead of just having one thing, you're going to have the URI in the port. So uh, in this case, it's pretty printed dot mysql dot python anywhere dash services dot com and then you need the port which is 3306 and you can also specify a local port on your machine but to avoid using a port that's being used for something else for whatever reason i'll let the tunnel figure out a port for me so this is all i need so this is the same url here it's basically the same information uh, except for the database name itself. So I have the username, I have the password, and then I have the URL here. And just know that the uh, password here is your Python Anywhere password. So your Python Anywhere password. And then the password, the other password is your database password. So your database password, even though I'll be changing this in a moment. But I just know the difference between the two because the password for the databases you set down here. So you create a new password for the databases that you have. Okay, so I have this tunnel set up. And basically what I want to do is after the tunnel is set up, I'll actually start it. So tunnel.start. And with the tunnel started, that means that there is an open connection between my computer and Python Anywhere. So now what I want to do is change the database URI. And because I'm no longer connecting to Python Anywhere directly, I'm actually going to connect to my local machine. So the URL here, instead of being services, it's going to be simply my local machine, which is 127.0.01. And then the port, I'll actually fill in in a moment. So I'm just gonna leave a placeholder here, just like that. And then the username and the password are the same uh, for the database. So basically this username is the username for Python Anywhere. It's used for both the SSH and your database. And then the database password is the actual database password that you set here. So just know, like I said, there's a difference between your database password and your password for Python Anywhere. And then finally, uh, the database is still the same because I still want to connect to pretty printed dot or dollar sign default. So really the only thing that has changed is the URL. And I'm connecting to my local machine and through this tunnel, it's going to act like I'm connecting directly to the Python anywhere. It's gonna take care of that connection for me, but you see in the database URI, I'm connecting to my local machine. And this port is going to be determined by the SSH tunnel. So all I need to do is pass in tunnel.localbind port. So this is the port that is used by SSH tunnel and uh, whatever that value is, it's going to input it here in the URI. So this is correct. So the port is going to be the port on your machine and then the port on the Python Anywhere server is 3306. So that's pretty much it to use this. So now I'll demonstrate that this actually works. So I'll start up uh, a Python REPL and I'll import DB from my files. So from run import DB. And just note that I have another file with my actual information. I don't wanna put it in this video because I actually use this account for Python anywhere. So it's a little easier to have two separate files. But I have um, the DB object imported and you can see that I didn't get any errors when I connected to the database. So I just run db.create all like normal. And then if I go back to my console 
and use show tables again, I now see one table tests. And if I select star from tests, there's nothing. And just to show you that I can actually use this, um, let's say from run import test, I'll create a new test. So DV session add this test. And then if I select star from test again, there should be one row. And we see ID of one. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward to use this. And what I'll do is I'll put the code for this somewhere and I'll link to it in the description below so you can use this in your app. Um, I think one final thing that we can cover is the case where if you're using this on your local machine or if you're using this on Python Anywhere. So normally when you're doing this on your local machine, you would access or you would run the app like this. So this is taking a moment because of the extra connection. But uh, once this exits, I'll be able to demonstrate. So what I mean is if you have this code and you're running it on your local machine, then you want this to be active. But when you move your code over to Python anywhere, then you don't want this to be active and you want to have a different URI. So you know, there are many ways you can approach this. Uh, one way that I thought of is using the you know if name equals main. So basically, if name equals main, then I'll do everything for the tunnel. And then else, I'll set the app config to be the original thing. And let's see, it would be something like this. I won't put the whole thing. I'll just do this. And the reason why I do it this way is because if I'm running it on my local machine, then I'll run Python and then run.py. And then this part gets executed because it's the main file that's being run. But if I put it on Python anywhere, then the file doesn't get run directly. So the else block will get called. But this really depends on your situation, uh, how you have your code set up for your database and your configuration. So it just depends. But uh, just note that you kind of want to figure out a way to uh, separate the case when you're testing it on your local machine and you're testing it on Python Anywhere itself, where you have it on Python Anywhere live. Uh, another way is to use configuration values for uh, production and test environments. You can do that. I mean, there are so many different things that you can do. Uh, so if you have a specific situation where you want to use this and you're not quite sure how to handle the case where uh, you know, you're running on your local machine or you're running on Python anywhere, then you can just leave a comment at the below the video and I can uh, look at it and I can possibly help you out with that. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. I hope it helps you connect to your database on Python Anywhere. Uh, if you have any questions about this, you can always leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video, and I will talk to you next time.